Hello and welcome to Newsmakers for this Thursday, October 3rd, 2024. I'm Louis Butko. Thanks for joining us. And today we're talking about a bit of an anomaly when it comes to the local media. In a time where newsrooms and radio stations are closing across the country, Fort Erie Radio is going against the grain and throwing their hat in the ring. A 24-7 online radio station and active newsroom had their grand opening this spring and have been reporting from the Southern Niagara Town ever since and on today's show i'm very pleased to be joined by the program director and morning show host brent jones and uh brent i mean i guess that's my first question is uh you see all these radio stations closing by these giant companies uh what makes you think that that you can do the job <laughs> Uh, you know, I think maybe that is precisely the reason we can do the job is because we are not one of the one of the big companies, as you noted. Um, you know, I'm a firm believer that that news media needs to be local. It needs to be live. It needs to be happening uh, in your local community. And I think, if anything, that's a competitive advantage. Um, I think it would. I think it'd also be fair to say that. Um, you know, what, one of the other things that we do really well here is that we work with people who live and work in our local community, both in terms of uh, our reporting staff, our broadcasters. Um, so it gives us an opportunity to really be, you know, feet on the ground with what's happening in our town. No, it's funny. Uh, I was I was talking to the mayor of St. Catharines a couple of weeks ago here at uh, CH. Just you know, a casual conversation. He's a Niagara guy. Obviously, I'm a Niagara guy. Uh, and I had mentioned Fort Erie Radio because uh, Chris Dubé had posted something, caught my attention. And you know, I worked at CKTB, so all these local reporters, you know, you get familiar with each other's names. Um, and it was just sort of like, have you seen this Fort Erie Radio thing? And it seems like that's the conversation I'm having. Uh, you've been word of mouth. Like I said, you had your grand opening a few months ago, but take us back to getting this up and going. How did you do it? Well, it's interesting you mentioned Chris Dubay, who's, who's one of our reporters here at Fort Erie Radio, but um, this all started with the loss of our uh, of our paper. We had the Post, a Metroland paper, um, forever and ever in, in the town of Fort Erie. Um, you know, lost that paper last year and ended up in, you know, what, I think the term is news desert, you know, a bit of a news desert here. And what it actually created was an opportunity with a lot of reporters in the region who are looking for work. Uh, Luke Edwards being another example of a reporter we work with here locally who covers council meetings for us in, in Fort Erie. Um, in, in many ways, it was a perfect storm to say, okay, I think for a town of our size and a town that's growing the way that it is, I think it's important and responsible that we have proper news coverage. And we are now doing the thing, you know, daily local news coverage uh, in a way that this this town hasn't had before. Um, so this, this project was not born out of, you know, some, you know, say some sort of deep history on my part being involved in broadcasting or news journalism. That's not the case. Um, it was just one of those things where I thought, you know, this, the, the, the shortcomings maybe that I have in skill sets I can hire out for. And there was sort of this perfect storm of talent available at the time. Yeah, no, absolutely. Luke Edwards, like I said, Chris Dubay, names uh, very familiar with in the uh, Niagara reporting circles. Um, your background, you're a real estate agent. So how, like you said, you're not a broadcast yeah. guy. Um, how, how, how and why, I guess, is the question. Why, Brent? Well, it, real estate doesn't really tie into what we're doing here at 40 Re Radio at all. What you find is that most most realtors, the more you sort of pull back the layers, you know, they, they have they have a lot of different projects on the go. And one of my core beliefs as a realtor predominantly working in the town of Fort Erie is that a good realtor should be a good community ambassador. If you're not willing to take care of the people where you live in your community, you probably have no business being in real estate. Um, so so many, many years ago, I started a I started a podcast called the 40 Fort Erie podcast that was a weekly show and it focused on things that were good and happening in our community. And I got sort of a love of being behind the mic. I, I enjoyed it. I uh, met a lot of people through doing that show, a lot of local community leaders, uh, small business owners, some of our service clubs and other things we have in town. And one of the things that's always impressed me in the time that I've lived in this area is that Fort Erie is not just a community of communities with Ridgeway, Crystal Beach, Stevensville, all being part of the same municipality, but it's a whole community of neighbors taking care of neighbors, people taking care of people. And I've lived pretty well the whole way around the Golden Horseshoe at one time or another in history. And I've never lived in a community that is so focused on helping other people. Mm -hmm. And where there was so much happening that very often I feel like does not get the attention or the spotlight that it deserves. 
So what has been the biggest challenge, I guess? It's, uh, it's a lot of work getting something like this up off the ground. 24-7 online radio station. I'm sure there's music licensing you got to worry about. There's a lot of things that, that need to happen to get a radio station off the ground. Um, you've been doing great work, but what is some of the challenges you found yourself running into? Well, the challenges sometimes are just the, the number of hours in a day. I think you alluded to earlier that 2024 is not the time most people jump in with both feet and say, hey, this is this is the time to start a news media company. Like if you were, you know, there there are <laughs> there are faster ways to save fame and fame and fortune in 2024 than than pursuing uh, news media. But um, I think I think for um, I think the challenge is just comes down to uh, doing everything sort of in in step, if that makes sense. There's a lot of, and I, I want to try to be careful not to reveal too much of my bias here, but there there tends to be a lot of funding, let's say, available for some of the the larger media players on a national level. And I'm sure you can appreciate, you know, with CHCH being an independent media outlet as well, that um, you know it's it's a little fewer and farther between the the smaller you go and the more local and the more remote you go. Um, so so there's a lot of time and effort involved in sort of balancing all the buckets. There's there's the the journalism, the news piece of the business. There is the broadcasting piece, as you alluded to, comes with a whole variety of not just tech issues, but but I mean book, booking guests and licensing and those types of things and keeping things topical on air. Uh, but then of course there's the advertising piece of it and working with with local businesses and local sponsors. Um, so so a lot of it is just juggling a lot of different plates. And as you're first growing and 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 starting out, um, a lot of things sort of need to come together at the right time and in the right place. For instance, you know, we launched with uh, five broadcasters when we first got on air back in May, um, added three more to our roster within the past month, offers some additional programming throughout the week. But uh, it's a number of those factors coming together sort of right place and right time. So uh, th those are the challenges, not enough hours in the day. That sounds like a pretty, uh, pretty big one for sure. Uh, but when sure. it comes to points of pride, what, what in these last few months have, has gotten you to, to stop and, and really forget about all those stressful nights uh, to remember, you know, maybe the reason why you started this or even why you started the podcast back in the day. What are, what are some of those moments in the last few months since getting this thing off the ground? Well, the, the I mean, God, there, there's there's almost too many to mention. I mean, it's it's the the news media is something I'm very very proud of because although you know we we previously had the 40 re post, we had the 40 re times until about 2017. We've had news coverage in this town before. We still have the 40 re observer as a biweekly publication. This town has never had news on this scale with daily local comprehensive news coverage, and that's something that we've accomplished that hasn't been done. Uh, before, to the best of my knowledge, in Fort Erie's history, so I'm very proud of the news reporting that we're doing and the caliber of reporting that we have. But we've been a part of some. We've been a part of some big events, you know, from having uh, having local bands and musicians in here, you know, uh, uh, performing, you know, special broadcasts, to um, you know, interviews with with celebrities like Maddie Matheson, where we've had a conversation with with Maddie that's you know on our news website, um, where we've worked with. Um, uh, you know, Cows Come Home is a show that that is filming right now in our town, and we've been we've had the good fortune of being able to work with that cast and crew, and have Katie and Lindsay here on the morning show. Um, I I think it's it's hard for me to pinpoint one thing because there have been so many good things that have happened as a result of this, and it's funny is most people in 2024 think about how can I declutter my inbox? I've got too many emails, I got too many subscriptions. The number of sheer compliments that we receive from people who receive our weekly news roundup delivered to their inbox. I mean, an email that people actually want to open, <laughs> I think is I think is something else. Um, some of the listener engagement we've had from contests and different things and giveaways we've run on air that you know, um, uh, having having a full roster booked of guests of people who want to come in and share their story and you know uh, having a, having programming that is focused uniquely on local voices. Um, these have all been huge pride points. Um, you know, and even even when you don't have a ton of hours in the day, you know, you feel really good about the stuff you have been able to accomplish. Well put. Um, let's talk about the news media part of that, because I have said in 2024, I've been a journalist for about 10 years. Uh, in 2024, it, it is uh, both harder uh, every day to be a journalist. Um, it's harder to be online as a journalist. Uh, why jump in to a business that is can be so harsh at times, that can be so demanding at times? Uh, you, like I said, you got a pretty sweet real estate gig, <laughs> but sure. why, why put your why why put your hat in this ring? 
you know, because I wanted to get rich, obviously. That's why I got into news media. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, you know, the secret's out. Ah, oh, damn. Yeah, the, the secret's, secret's out, out that's Brent. <laughs> That's that's where the money is for sure. No, um, the the answer for me was very simple: is that I think I think it's important. Uh, I think uh, one of the things that um, and and we need to work on this and develop it more. Uh, but I implemented last spring because we had our news website was launched prior to us actually having broadcasters on air through the internet radio piece. And um, one of the programs that I began working to develop was to create opportunities for student journalists at our local schools like Greater Fort Erie Secondary and, and Fort Erie International Academy to say, hey, I, I would like to create opportunities for, for young people to take an interest in journalism. It's no secret that a lot of the big players have had some, you know, have made some pretty significant cuts, layoffs in the, in the past little bit. Um, and it, it is becoming a situation where Fort Erie is the rule, not the exception in the sense that we became uh, virtually a complete news desert. And, um, you know, I, it was one of those things where I thought this is something that I could, I feel I could take on my shoulders and I could help to restore to this town. Um, I think it's, you know, I, maybe this is getting too high level, but I think it's one of those items that's important for, for democracy is to have an informed, you know, an informed citizenry that they know what's happening. Um, when we have, um, you know, we've got a great council here in the town of Fort Erie, but if nobody's talking about what's being discussed at, at Fort Erie council meetings, it doesn't do a whole lot of good to, to people living in this town. So that's a, just one example, one piece, but um, I think I think it's important for people to be informed, not just of the big national issues, not just of the international, you know, headlines, not of the clickbait stuff, but what's happening in your own backyard. Because it is amazing to me how many people could tell you about, you know, what happened during the, you know, the vice presidential debate the other night, but they couldn't tell you what happened at their own town town's council meeting, or they couldn't tell you about the project happening down at the waterfront. They have no idea. Um, and, and I think that, um, I think a lot of the solutions to, 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 to problems that we face at, at a local level sometimes just comes from having lack of access to local useful information. You mentioned uh, your, your your weekly newsletter, which will get people the link uh, at what, before we're gone here. Um, but more to that, the reaction from just the public that you've gotten, what has it meant to you? And then again, those sleepless nights, those stressful days, uh, what has it meant to you to get that feedback from residents who, I didn't know this was happening. I didn't realize, I'm, I'm here because I saw it on you. Like, we get it here, but what for you personally, what does that mean to, to what you do? Uh, I, there's kind of two answers to that question because, I mean, it has a lot of personal meaning to me. But at the same time, I don't like to take a lot of the personal credit because it's very much a team effort. As I mentioned, we have, you know, we have eight broadcasters, we have two journalists, we have an account manager. It's not, it's not just me who's who's doing all the things. We have a great team who's making this happen and a locally based team. The the requirement to be a broadcaster of 40 Re Radio is not that you have a tremendous amount of broadcast experience, it's that you have a tremendous amount of Fort Erie experience. That's what we're looking for in people to work with. So I don't, I certainly don't want to take all the credit credit for for saying hey this is the, what it means to 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 me that you know the thing that I've done but for me personally um, it is it is it is gratifying to see you know the hard work and the effort pay off to see a team come together to do you know what we've been able to do in a relatively short period of time you know our uh, one of the questions we commonly get is about um, being an internet radio stream that we don't have a terrestrial broadcast and my answer to that has always been, well, how many people have an AM, FM radio outside of their car? Most people don't. If they're at home, they're using some sort of digital streaming device anyway. And if you're in your car, your phone connects to your car anyway. So we're not at a major disadvantage in that sense. And going through the data for the past month, approximately a third of Fort Erie households tuned in last month to Fort Erie radio at least one time, um, which is a relatively short period of time. And I think it I think it speaks to the need to have something that is truly local and happening in our community. Um, you know, where where I, I don't want to take it too much further than that, just yeah. just to not not to dig myself, hmm. sort of back myself into a corner with that <laughs> one. But to truly have a live local broadcast happening yeah. here in our town, I think has been really significant for people. What would this being successful look like to you? Is it already there? What would what would success look like for Fort Erie Radio? Um, that, I mean, that, that that's a big question. Um, I, I do think, I, I think what we've done already has been a success, not just for us as a team, not 
just as a news media company, but I think for our community has been a success, has been a win. Um, but I mean, long term, there's there's still growth. There's still more airtime, you know, that we need to make sure we have covered. Um, you know, I think we can go deeper on some of our local stories. I think we, you know, there's there's certainly room to keep developing and adding to our our journalism talent. Um, and I certainly think there's a lot of a lot of listeners slash readers audience you know in Fort Erie that we haven't reached yet that maybe aren't fully aware or exposed to us they either you know maybe have not acquired the app or they have and they're you know they maybe they haven't opened it um maybe they've they've scanned a news story on our website they found it through google but they you know they haven't fully made the connection and and some of it too success wise is differentiation one of one of the things that's difficult starting any new media outlet news or otherwise is is sometimes the confusion factor in a small town where people go, well, aren't you such and such station or aren't you connected to this or that? And you go, no, no, we're, we're a, we're a new thing. And, and I love this town. I think it's pretty evident. Nobody starts Fort Erie radio because of a disdain <laughs> for their, the place they live. But it is sometimes the case that, that things can take a little longer to catch on in smaller towns where things have always been sort of a certain way, if that makes sense. So I think part of us for our success long term is going to be not just the flash in the pan, but the staying power of being Fort Erie's local source for news, rock and local talk. Uh, Brent, um, like I said, my parents have a cottage up there in uh, in Crystal Beach. I plan on staying. I'm off next week, so I plan on staying. I uh, plan on coming by, saying hi. But I also need uh, a hidden gem sandwich shop in uh, in Fort Erie. What do you got for me? I need. Uh, I, I love a good sandwich. So if I'm coming by next week, where do I got to stop? Can I give you two? Give me two. Yeah, I'm there. All, I might be there all week, so two's good. Yeah. All right. So directly across the street from us, there's a coffee shop called Little Red Coffee. Um, they um, uh, they have some fantastic. I just actually had a sandwich from them. The, the uh, sandwich is called the Peace Bridge, so named after the, the Peace Bridge yeah. here. It's a turkey sandwich, but uh, I recommend stopping in there for coffee and a sandwich. Uh, Crafted 1885 has great subs and smash brisket burgers on Dominion Road as well. So either of those, you will not be disappointed. All right, buddy. Uh, looking forward to stopping in, and saying hi next week. Thanks for doing this. Really excited about what you're doing. You're doing great work there, man. Keep it up. Thank you. I really appreciate you saying that. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. That is Brent Jones. He is the program director for FortErieRadio.ca. Check him out. A brand new 24-7 local radio station. Uh, and they got a great uh, news outlet there as well. So uh, great talking with Brent. I want to thank uh, him for joining me today. I want to thank you as well because we could not do the show without your support. Uh, and while you're here, make sure you like and subscribe to CHCH Podcast so you never miss an episode of this show or any of the other great shows we have for for you. I want to thank Mike Corston for directing today's show. I want to thank Aaron McCormick as well. And one more time, thank you for listening. From all of us here at CHCH, I'm Louis Bucko. Have a great day.